Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Let's Play Doom. Today, I am actually playing it on my PlayStation 4. Uh, I was playing it earlier today and just happened to wind up beating it. Uh, or beating, I should say, Knee Deep in the Dead, the first episode, not the game itself. <laughs> um, but it, it happened so quickly, I was like, you know what, what the heck, let's just hit the share button and save that chunk of gameplay. And then we can just add commentary to it. So yes, I'm afraid it's not live this time, and I apologize for that. But I thought it would be a good idea to just take advantage of what's there. It'll make the whole process a little quicker, you know? Um, I haven't played... I, ha I haven't done a Let's Play in a while. Or I should say, like, two weeks. Because I meant to do one every week. It was supposed to be regular. Um, because... I've been playing the new Dooms, or at least <laughs> I've finally been playing the 2016 one. It's been on my backlog forever, and uh, so I finally, oop, zombie soldier, and uh, so I finally got around to playing it, and uh, that's what distracted me, <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm trying to play, I want to play some new games, and uh, catch up on my TV and stuff. There's not a lot of time these days to get all this stuff done, you know, quarantine and all. Um... So I'm back at it here, and uh, I also wanted to take an opportunity to kind of fix some of the mistakes I might have made in the original uh, Let's Play. Uh, for starters, this is on the PlayStation 4. It's not the classic complete collection that's now defunct. Um, using some barrels there wisely. Very good, very good. Uh, but the PS4 digital ones, I originally disparaged a little bit because they got a lot of criticism when they first came out, rightly so. Um... But they fixed them, actually, earlier this year. I didn't even know it. Uh, cause, and that's kind of why I wanted to bring it up, because uh, everyone else talked about it, which is how I found out about it. I was like, oh, these games are bogus, huh? And uh, I found out when I got them. I was like, yeah, they seem like it. But then, you know, when I actually looked at them, seriously, I realized that they fixed it. And they did so back in January. They, they fixed pretty much everything. And uh, they've uploaded a lot of content for it. Well, not a lot. They've uploaded the stuff that was missing, and a couple extra things. Like for Doom in particular, they added Sigil, which is the uh, blue key. Uh, it's on a pressure plate there, so make sure uh, if you get stuck in that room, you stand on that pressure plate where the blue key was, and uh, you'll get out again. It's the only way to trigger the doors. Um, so yeah, the... Uh, <laughs> where was I? Um... I have no idea what I was just talking about. We're going to clear out this room real quick, take advantage of the not technically 3D graphics here. Take out, yeah, there's a... Uh, they fixed the PS4 dudes, is what I was just thinking. <laughs> Use the Gatling gun, and it was a little more effective against zombies. Um, and it's, the stuff that was missing is back with some extra. Um, so I wanted to re rectify that. And also, um, and it's technically an upgrade. They upgraded the, uh, the sound is a lot better. The... Um, frame rates even better it was perfect the frame rate was fine the uh, classic complete collection as it was uh, if you happen to have it you can't get it now anyway but if you had it from before it's um it's a perfect emulation of the pc version you know this is an upgraded version it runs at a higher frame rate at a higher resolution and uh has better sound to it so <laughs> it's it's Doom 1 Plus, right? And uh, it's the same for Doom 2 now. They added in the stuff they removed. It is a complete game. And uh, with all the extras. And still a lot of fun to play. And that's another thing I wanted to get into with these games a little bit. You know, um, to th first to go over to monsters a little. I've been killing some, some zombies here and there. There's regular zombies are like the, they sometimes call them troopers. I'm trying to hit the switch real quick because you have to. This lift is right there, and it goes up real quick. And if you miss it, <laughs> it's very easy. You can get the lost soul that way. And that gave us a plus 100% up to 200% health. And since I wasn't that low, I got up to 200%. Um, so yeah, there's zombies with the that are armed with assault rifles, some kind of rifle. And you can't use it. Doom guy can't use those rifles, but he can pick up the bullets from them. Uh, and then there's, of course, the upgraded one, which we've already uh, encountered, which is the Shotgunner, also known as the Sergeant, I think is his official name. Uh, they're handy because they do drop, in fact, the shotgun. So if you're starting a new save, or if you died, and you kill one of them, then you get a shotgun automatically. 
damage. That's at least good. I'm gonna blow up that barrel there. You can see another yellow key card waiting for us. We're gonna find a way back there to pick that up. Uh, and here they are playing with the lighting effects again. This was also a first for uh, the franchise. For Doom, for Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein didn't have the lighting effects, but Doom did, even if they're just basically like, blinking, you know, uh, somewhat spastically. <laughs> not not uh, the most impressive lighting effects. And of course, we have the PlayStation 4 version, or no, sorry, the PlayStation version of Doom. Then you got the uh, colored lighting, which is even cooler. Now, I can't do anything in there, so I'll go back. Now, this room, that design on the floor originally was a swastika. Uh, they had to alter it because of censorship reasons. And, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of censorship. It's not like I get excited over swastikas or anything. But, uh, you know, it was made that way because it was a tribute to Wolfenstein, which, again, predated Doom. It was from the same company, it. So it was just a nice little throwback. And, uh, unfortunately, it's one they had to get rid of pretty early on. And this section is a maze down here, past the blue door. Uh, there's not a whole lot of mazes like this in the game. There's a few. But nothing too crazy. Wolfenstein was really... Uh, more famous, or infamous rather, gotta kill that imp, um, for its mazes and labyrinth-like level design, where it was very easy to get lost, and it took a while to figure out where you're supposed to go. A lot of times you wind up wandering around an empty castle, uh, an empty stage, just trying to figure out what the hell's next. <laughs> and luckily there's a door right here to let us know we got the yellow key card. Um, you don't get lost much in Doom, and that switch raised the platform. So we got that back, and uh, we're good to go. That's another stage down. Um, so yeah, you know, it's uh, it was just playing homage to Doom. And like I said, I don't get excited over swastikas or anything. But I don't like censorship, you know. They're just homaging their, their previous title. It's a little throwback. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Nothing wrong. Um, doesn't mean it's pro-Nazi or anything. It's ridiculous. But anyways, uh, so yeah, that's... Uh, that's command control. In a nutshell, I finished it pretty quick. Now we do the Phobos lab. Like I said, we're on Phobos, one of the moons around. Uh, I'm doing a quick save here. I do one before every stage so that I can keep my weapons. Um, yeah, we're on Phobos, a moon over Mars. Uh, our units was wiped out. We're the last. Um, now, Doom Guy in the, the backstory in the instruction booklet was assigned to this post because uh, for striking a senior officer it was a punishment Phobos is seen as uh, just going here raised that platform there so we'll be able to walk across um, being assigned to Phobos was seen as a punishment so he was being punished for hitting a superior officer the reason he hit his superior excuse me sir was uh, that was a regular trooper a zombie um, because he was ordered to fire upon unarmed civilians, and he refused to, and instead punched his supervisor in the face. So, there's a penalty for that, and we found the gold key. His penalty for punching his supervisor, a doom guy was assigned the most boring post there is, which is Phobos, as punishment. And here we got our first demon, I believe. He's a pinky. They, uh, they're close range enemies. They, uh, they're easiest to fight with the chainsaw. That's the most effective weapon against them. There was no limit to the chainsaw in these older games. Um, it just kind of left you, you know, open to attacks. But if they're the only ones you're worrying about, then you can bust it out no problem, and it'll take care of them. Because it causes the chainsaw causes stagger when it hits things, so it's going to stop them. And it's quite effective as long as there's not a lot of other enemies around. Obviously, because when you're using it, you're not going to be mobile. And so other enemies can take you out. And here we'll shotgun ourselves with a couple more guards done. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing you have to be precautious about when using the chainsaw. But otherwise, it's a perfectly effective way of dealing with... We're going to have to come back here later. Of dealing with the pinky demons. Alright. Um, so yeah, the other thing I wanted to talk about is... Uh, with any older franchise like this... Uh, you know, it's been around for a couple decades. You get your fans and you get your fanatics. Now, fans are what most people are. It's what normal people are. They just like playing the game. It's fun to play. And that's all there is to it. And they don't need anything more than that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, fanatics are fans that have basically uh, <laughs> abandoned common sense and reason. Okay, a prime example would be... Uh, 
they don't criticize. They will not criticize something they are they like, no matter what. You know, any fan is probably going to criticize what they they enjoy because they want it to be better if it can. Here's a little secret, a series of secret doors to a chainsaw. So if you died recently in a lost soul, you can get a chainsaw and a lost soul there. Very useful. Um, and we're going to need the radiation suit for what we're about to do. Of course, it can be easy to get a little lost in this spot because all the walls look the same. So anyway, um, like a fan will be critical, specifically critical, really, because if you're criticizing something, it's because you like it, you want to see it do better, right? Um, you're not going to criticize it if you don't care. If you don't like it, you don't care, so you're not going to say nothing. But um, if you do like it and you think it could be better, you want it to be better, you want it to succeed. And that's, uh, that's the difference between a fan and a fanatic. A fanatic won't admit that there's flaws, that there's things to improve upon. It's perfect as is, and to claim anything else is, is a sacrilege, you know? So, uh, and you come across those with Doom. Which is why, you know, I had trouble watching some Let's Plays and watching a lot of reviews. Because I do research before I get into these games, and especially if I do something like the Doom Retrospective that I just released. Um... You know, I try to look into things and figure out what's what. And it's difficult with Doom because fanatics are giving you one story and it's not the real story, you know? Um, anytime you, d you hear someone talk about how important a game, a video game is, or how influential it is, they're probably blowing some smoke. Um, because the fact is the gaming industry has been around a lot longer than most people realize. It's been around since, really since the early 70s, alright? Pretty much every genre was tried even back then. Um, not necessarily successfully, but they were all around. So to say, like, Doom invented first-person shooters, not only is it uh, wrong in the short-term consideration, because Wolfenstein 3D is a thing, and is in fact the bones on which Doom was built, running under a very similar engine. Um, but there, there were other games. They were not the first first-person shooters. So the, the thing you got it. That's when people, you know, they start moving the goalposts. Oh well, it was the first, you know, commercially successful. The first to sell so many copies. The first to be featured in in so many magazines. Like enough moving the goalposts, dude. Just admit it wasn't the first. You were wrong. Okay, there's nothing wrong with being wrong. But you gotta, that's why you, you look at stuff before you make generalizations like that. Like, it's easy to sit here and say, look, like, if this was your first game you ever played, oh, more of the lighting effects here, this is about the best they could do with it back then. Let's just make it flash, it's either on or off, and that's pretty much it. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's, uh, <coughs> it's one thing, like, to say you like something, but if, if Doom was your first game, for instance, to say that Doom invented video games, I mean, from your perspective, that might seem accurate, it was your first game, but it's an inaccurate statement to make, and most people wouldn't make it because they'd have enough common sense to know that, oh yeah, that's right, there were video games before 1993, <laughs> this wasn't the first, but a fanatic uh, can't make that line of reasoning off the central processing, um, you know, they have trouble with that, and, uh, and that's why it's hard to get information from them. Whenever they're talking about uh, nebulous concepts, you know, how something feels, or the spirit that it has, or the anything that you can't actually describe. Like, when they say something and you just, it makes no sense, because it doesn't mean anything, they're probably blowing smoke, you know, because you don't need to be nebulous if you know it's good, you know why it's good, and you'll say it's good, you know? You don't need uh, to invent reasons to like something, because you'll know right away why you like it. And there's plenty to like with these games, and I don't mean any of this is a knock at doom by any means. And here we got the red key, which is going to trigger a trap. More enemies! And that's doom, classic doom in a nutshell, by the way. Uh, you pick up a key card or you hit a switch, uh, walls peel away, and there's more enemies. Which is why it's kind of baffling uh, when people complained in doom. When Doom 2016 came out, that uh, about the arena sections, where they lock you in a room and you had to fight off several waves of enemies. I mean, I kind of get it, but at the same time, how much different is this? You know, when you pick up an item and walls peel away just to throw more enemies at you. Like, there was no other reason for that for those kinds of ambushes. 
but to pad things out. And that's exactly the complaint about the the arenas. Maybe the arenas are a little worse because they're locking you in. I don't know. Um, but it still sounds like apples and oranges to me, you know. Um, this looks like a little goody area. And instant regret of all kinds. Uh, that hurt. Took away all my bogus stuff. I tried to look in. I couldn't see nothing. At least there's plenty of med packs there to heal you up. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's another quandary, and that's also kind of a, but that's a different fanatic deal. <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, it's been interesting, and I only bring it up because of my experience doing research for the videos. It's difficult. Uh, yes, blue key time. Blue key. Oh, here's another. See, that's what these damn pinky demons do is they sneak up on you. And when you're not ready for them, they hit you. And you see, he came out of this little square here. It was another ambush. I picked up the key. It opened the trap. And <laughs> I sprung the trap card, okay? <laughs> uh, now, I did see this in a video where there's stuff back here. So I went ahead and I luckily found the suit first. That was pure luck there. And then I found the super armor. And things were pretty much back on track for me. Uh, so yeah, there's the fanatics out there that want to tell you that uh, Doom invented 3D gaming, that it invented the first person shooter, and uh, that Wolfenstein just doesn't count. They can't even come up with a good reason. It's just, it just doesn't count. It's not the same thing. You know, it's not true to the spirit. And again, they get into the nebulous stuff that you know is a, is a load the <laughs> minute they start saying it. And... Uh, you know, that's that's just how it ends. Um, and there's plenty of that with Doom. And like I said, you don't need it. You don't need to put down Wolfenstein to prop up Doom. You don't. Doom stands very well on its own. And on top of which, so does Wolfenstein. They're both great titles. There's no reason to put down other games so you can give accolades to this one. You know, this one does just fine in acc the accolade department. <laughs> you know? Um... And so, yeah, that's that's my hot take on all that kind of nonsense you see a lot of going around. Is it an important game? I don't know. I think things still would have turned out the way they did, no matter what. If anything, Quake probably had more influence on things. It invented the arena combat, you know, uh, which was still very popular in online games. You know, there, there's a little bit of Quake in Fortnite, you know? There's <laughs> a little bit in, 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 in everything. But there's, there's really no... Uh, not much of Doom left in those kinds of games. Doom really did its own thing for a long time. And here I know that there's something back here, but I can't get to it just yet. So I wasted some health there. But, you know, say la vie, huh? It is what it is. And here we got another little maze. Uh, not too bad. I was saying before, uh, Wolfenstein had places where you get lost and it could get depressing. But uh, Doom, not so much. There's a few tricky spots like this one. Uh, where you can get a little dizzy, but there's really nothing that bad. You wander around long enough, eventually you're going to find what you need. It's, a, it's just going to happen. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that, and that's the big difference. In, in Wolfenstein, uh, you'd be wandering for uh, hours looking for where the damn key is or the damn switch, you know. You missed a room somewhere or something. And it was hard to keep track of everything in your head. Eventually you could do it. It just took much, much longer. It was a much, much slower game. Uh, this game is much faster about it. Much faster in general. So, uh, it just goes to why it's a better game. Wolfenstein's still good, but Doom is better. At least to me. Um, so yeah, and that's the thing. Like, like I said, Doom did inspire a lot of games. It had a lot of clones. Duke Nukem 64, as everyone likes to say, uh, you know, Star Wars uh, Dark Forces was a clone of it very much. And uh, so, yeah, there was a lot of influence. But like I said, Quake came along and a lot of things started changing really right after that. Once uh, like Half-Life and System Shock came out, things started changing towards that direction a bit and started getting stuff like Counter-Strike, which changed the online scene altogether. There's a lot of shooters. Unreal played a major role. Uh, a lot of fighters added to that legend. It wasn't just Doom. And Doom didn't just start it. It was already going with Wolfenstein and really other games that nobody likes to give credit to. Um, 
And that's all I'm saying. They're good games, just you don't need... Oh, here's a Spectre. I think this is our first Spectre. Uh, it's basically an invisible demon, or Pinky, as they like to call him. Uh, you could call him a Shadow Pinky, but we did get our last key card there, so we could finally head back to the main area and uh, proceed out and exit that way. And of course, we have some new doors opening up here, but I decided to run across and see what's there. Also, you see Imps crawling out from around the corner, and that could only mean one thing, that that corner is open. And of course, there's Imps there to ruin our day, and you want to run through quickly so that your suit doesn't run out on you. That's the big thing here. Okay, here we go. Goodie room. I love my goodie rooms. Um, so yeah, that's uh, again, that's my take. Here we got a nice lost soul, and luckily he comes down to greet us. It took me a minute to figure out how to get out of here aside from backtracking, because I thought that would just lift us up, and I was like, it's just a wall here, but you know, the obvious didn't occur to me for a little bit. Um, and it already did. I was like, maybe it's a at the top of this is another hidden door. And lo and behold, I was right. Um, take us back to the main area so that we can work our way out. The, uh, so yeah, Doom's a great game. Wolfenstein was a great game. They did influence a lot of other games. Uh, but is it was this historic to the industry overall? I don't think so. I think other games would have filled in eventually, regardless. And uh, the genre would have moved along anyway, because the Doom style didn't last too long. The sprite shooters, they used to call them, they were real popular for about three or four years. And then that was pretty much it. Once things went 3D, uh, they left this stuff behind. Big behind. And uh, again, like Doom, Doom didn't invent multiplayer, which is another thing that some people will say. You know, that like, it was the first. And then when they get called on it, they have to change it. Well, it was the first to, to call it a deathmatch. You know, it was the first to use the word. I'm like, is, did he invent a word, really? Like, nobody ever said deathmatch before that? I'm pretty sure it was a monster truck term back in the day. Uh, if not a wrestling term, I know it was back in the 70s. So, you know. <laughs> but what, how, how far back you gonna move these goalposts? Sometimes you got no choice but a pinky but the shotgun. Because that's just what you're carrying around. And here you can already tell what's gonna happen, right? We're gonna hit this switch. And uh, shit's gonna come crawling out and come after us. Because, uh, yep, there you go. Trap, laid, set, triggered. And, uh, more baddies and uh, zombies fighting each other for some reason. <laughs> and, uh, I probably, I hope, and a specter who is in a, in a dark area, an invisible enemy. But we'll use the chainsaw, works good, pretty good against him as well, as it does the pinky, so. I don't like to use it for everything, but here's the exit, and that's another stage done. And I keep expecting there to be something in there, but on this difficulty setting, it never is. And that's central processing complete. I got most of the secrets. I did pretty good. Only triple the uh, par time, which is uh, pretty good for me. <laughs> Alright. Back in. And this is the computer station. So. Anyways, yeah, that's my two cents on it. Doom's a great game. It doesn't need to be propped up on Wolfenstein's corpse or anyone else's. Uh, but it's it's not the be all end all really. It's just the fun. There's another specter to ruin our day. If I had noticed he was there, I could have triggered those barrels and probably got him. But he was already on top of me. And uh, here I'm just gonna use the Gatling gun to clear out space. Cause it is terribly effective against zombies. So I'm gonna keep rolling with that. And uh, you know, make my way as you do. Now, like I said, these levels you can get lost in them. They're pretty big. But you're never going to get really lost, like, not be able to find your way out again, you know? Uh, most likely you might die a few times because enemies popped up on you, got a few cheap shots in, you know? That's probably your biggest concern. You're going to run around in circles for a little bit, running by dead bodies. Um, that's not bad. Right there you see, see a door, and it cuts you off. Which is another point I'd like to make. The difference between, you know, a well-designed, non-linear game and a badly designed one. Uh, that door cut us off from the main room right there. So we didn't have to go wandering around for days, hitting dead ends, and then hitting, you know, after a series of corridors and rooms, hitting the red door. And it's, it's just there right away. So we know in our head it's right there attached to the main room. It's not hard to track. And I bring that up because some games have trouble doing that, you know? Some games, they'll let you get lost, and there's the yellow key, and just wander around 
forever finding nothing but a series of dead ends, one right after the other. And you're supposed to keep track of all these dead ends in your head. And uh, you, you can't, you just can't. Because <laughs> it's too much to remember all at once. Like, you have to remember everything. Every single thing. Yeah, I saw you, Imp. I got you. Um, and that's just a lot of, a lot to on the mind. And, you know, I can hear stuff. I know there's more in here, so I'm like, oh, let's check this out. There we go. We can go up inside here and see what's up up here, up top. I'm already getting hit. I get that guy. Spun around and nailed with the shotgun. And go around collecting, a, I believe it was a missile launcher there. And there's more missiles here. Just good stuff, good stuff. Um, I'm going to need all the missiles I can get, all the rockets. Because uh, the boss is coming up pretty soon. And uh, rockets will be very useful. You know. Uh, so yeah, that's my thing. Because there's, <laughs> and apparently there's a lot of controversy with the newer Doom games. Um, but yeah, that's a, I, I'm losing track of my thoughts again here. That's the difference though between like good level design and bad level design. For non-linear, like non-linear you want the cutoffs to be near the main route. So that way people don't have to, you know, get lost and just keep track of all the dead ends. They could just, it's easier to keep track of in their heads when it's closer to the main route. At least in the beginning. You can hide the other routes later on, but it's got to be, you know, there's got to be a certain order to it. You got to do it right. And if you don't, then, um, you wind up running around in circles, getting lost, and you'll never find your way through, you know? And that's a bad level design. When you can't keep track of where you've been, because there's so many areas that were dead ends or that just didn't lead to anything, and you can't keep track of it in your head, it's a lot of stuff. And that's just bad level design. Uh, Doom is an example of good levels, right? Like, Wolfenstein did it bad because it was the maps were all over the place. You couldn't make sense of this versus that. But Doom did it much more aesthetically uh, engineered to be something that you could easily keep track of in your head. You didn't need to draw maps out by pen. You didn't have to get a strategy guy that showed you shit. You could just keep track of it. Just, if you wander around long enough, you'll find your way. You know, that's the bottom line. And that it works is a testament to why Doom works. Why it's a good title. And, um, and I mention that also because it's been an issue in the newer games. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> he was uh, really in our face there. Um, people have been complaining in the new games about uh, the platforming. You know, that uh, platforming has never been a part of Doom. And it's not about Doom's not about hopping around like a monkey and yada yada. Um... Really, the only reason you can't jump in Doom is because it's not actually a 3D game. You know? Uh, it's all about non-linear design, so... It's all about finding secrets, it's all about... Uh, and I got a little stuck here because I couldn't figure out where to go. But, um... Doom has always been about, uh... Not necessarily cryptic, but having secrets and wandering around to find stuff. Uh, you just couldn't jump because of technical limitations, you know? And, uh... Once they added those platforming elements in, they enhanced the exploration even more. Because not only could they be used in combat, making combat even more mobile than it was. You know, and as everyone always says, Doom is always about your being, you know, mobile shoot running gun, right? It's a running gun game. And uh, so having platforming mechanics, there's the red card. So that opens up uh, all new paths for us. And we can see the blue card, so we just got to get there. Um, but as I was saying... The uh, platforming opens up all kinds of new exploration elements for the nonlinear design, and it allows the creators to get more creative with the layouts. And here you can already see uh, the, the tricky part with this stage is uh, when you get to uh, your key card, it doesn't trigger an ambush there. It, it opens multiple ambushes all along the route. So every now and then you get, you know, back attacked by units that weren't there originally because there was a new door open. You know, there's another one. had a zombie in it. <laughs> you know how it goes. Um, so yeah, that's uh, and that's it's a weird thing to see people bringing up that uh, something that really is a classic Doom element is a non-linear design, and to run around saying that it's not Doom. It's just weird. It's a weird flex, you know. I mean, to each their own. But to say that it's not Doom, it, it very much is Doom. In fact, there are ledges and stuff you can fall off, which can kind of screw you. You know, there's that one of those first areas that we were at that had the danger signs up, right? Here we got another key card, which means more places are going to open up. Uh, more ambushes. 
But uh, the nonlinear design was always a big part. Yep, see, there's two soldiers there who were waiting for us right inside. Kind of Dark Souls style there, you know, we're sitting right inside the doorway, nestled tightly. Um, but yeah, the, the navigating the verticality of Doom has always been one of its biggest selling points, especially over its predecessors, Wolfenstein and others. You know, this was uh, one of the first pseudo 3D games that had elevated levels and stairs and ramps. Well, not ramps, but, you know, elevators and lifts. This game made its name on that, on its verticality, and platforming is just more verticality. <laughs> it's just adding to that. So it's it's still a running gun, uh, high speed game with non-linear exploration. It's still very much Doom, you know, uh, to be emphasizing that stuff. And it's a very old school video game. It's something you don't see a lot of these days, which is why it's refreshing to see it in Doom and Doom Eternal. That platforming's back. I think it's about time, because they, they they tied cement shoes to Kratos there and the new God of War to make it more Dark Souls, which I hated. I hated that they did that. And uh, But here comes Doom back, and you couldn't jump in Doom, but now you can, and it's, it's so refreshing, because it's like, finally, someone fucking, you know, they're doing game mechanics again. Like, they're trying to design good games. But God forbid, it's supposed to be an interactive movie, right? And this is coming from a guy that loves his strong nerves. Boom! Getcha! Uh, I do like that the bodies stay there, too. <laughs> That's something that uh, people will bring up. Like, all these disappearing bodies. Like, well, Doom didn't have disappearing bodies. So why can't you? Huh? There you go. Another one done. Computer station complete. That was a little more complicated. Now, Phobos Anomaly is the boss stage. Uh, there's one other level I didn't do, which is the... Um, the secret stage, the military base, which is very, very tough. Uh, I'm nowhere near being able to handle that. Uh, but this is the boss stage. So here, we got a room full of demons and some barrels. So you blow them up. Excuse me, takes care of that problem. And you can see from here, we can go a couple different ways. We'll go up here and get the bonus stuff first. Um, and that's an auto map, which is that weird green box. <clears throat> Excuse me, you might have seen me pick it up before. I don't use the maps much because you really don't need them. Doom isn't that complicated a game. Maybe in some of the later areas, some of the, the wads. But for now, I don't rely on it too much. Um, moving on to part two. Yeah, we're gearing up for our first boss fight at the end of Knee Deep in the Dead. And I was expecting resistance here. That never came because I'm on a lower difficulty setting. <laughs> Which is fine, like I said. Uh... I'm fine with that. I can live with that. You know, I don't have to be uh, the top tier hardcore gamer. And there's a Gatling gun here. So they give you a shotgun and a Gatling gun, which is okay. You can get by. But it's definitely much easier to have the rocket launcher here. As you'll see in a moment. Again, I bust out the Gatling gun just in case. Just in case, because I'm not sure what's going to come up first here. Because sometimes there's extra enemies running around here. But for the most part, it's just these two. This is a Baron of Hell. A uh, new enemy and a boss for the Knee Deep in the Dead. There's two of them. Uh, they're quite durable. Uh, rockets take care of them pretty easily. But, uh, again, if you died before, you might only have, like, a, the Gatling gun and the shotgun that are in this stage. Which would make it much harder. Luckily, the floor doesn't damage you, even though it looks like it would. And defeating them causes the uh, roof to lower. The walls go down. And you now have access to the rest of the area. I first go to do my necrophile thing and plunder the place, which winds up not being anything because I'm just about maxed out and everything anyway. Uh, the only stuff I could use would be rockets and energy cells, which I'm not going to find here. I'm only going to find bullets and, and shells and some bonuses. And, uh, yeah, so this whole thing's shaped like a pentagram. It's a five-pointed star, and uh, it's all pointing us to the exit, right? Like, we've cleared the Phobos base. You can see the mountains here. And we're about to leave, and presumably, to uh, to go home, with any luck. All right, we'll let the stairs come up. And this was a this is a fun game to play. I did enjoy it, and I'm still going to keep going. We got you know two more story episodes left, and possibly another one. And we'll see how that goes. We step on this teleport pad, and we should go home, right? Oh, this ain't home. What's this? What's going on here? Oh no, we're dying. <laughs> Okay. Once you beat the big badasses and clean out the moon base, 
You're supposed to win, aren't you? Aren't, aren't you? Where's your fat reward and ticket home? And what the hell is this? It's not supposed to end this way. It stinks like rotten meat, but looks like the lost Demos base. Looks like you're given... <laughs> looks like you're stuck on the shores of hell, and the only way out is through. To continue to... You have to play the other game. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, I tried to read that as quick as I could. The, the screen is awful fuzzy, you know, so you make do. And this is the end credits. I actually like the end credits. I think they're pretty cool, so I'll let them roll. Uh, so that's the first episode, Knee Deep in the Dead. We still have On the Shores of Hell and uh, the, finale, the finale of the original is Inferno. Uh, there is also, of course, um, Thy Flesh Consumed, which is really a challenge map. So I'm not going to worry too much about completing it. I'll give it a shot, see how far we get. But I'm not going to invest in it a whole lot. But I will try Sigil for real, because John Romero made that wad. For the original Doom, so it's basically, you know, canon as far as I'm concerned. And takes that, actually takes that extra step to set up Doom 2, which is something Thy Flesh Consumed really doesn't do. I mean, it says it does, but it really doesn't. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, we'll have some fun with Sigil. Um, and then we'll move on to Doom 2 and so on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, I hope you had some fun, and uh, I hope the music came through, because it was awful quiet the last time. But, uh, it's good music, I enjoy it. Uh, until next time, enjoy the rest of the credits and take it easy.